said to Nicodemus, except you be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus was sent forth from the Father to give you eternal life. It was God's plan to redeem you unto Him. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. Hi, I'm Reverend Victoria Fury. I want to welcome you to this program. This program will bring a refreshing of the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the glad tidings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came with great news, the good news, the good news of the kingdom. He came because he loved you. He came because he loved his father. And he came to willingly give his life a holy sacrifice for every person upon the earth for every nation under heaven. Jesus Christ came for you, and he loves you with an everlasting love, and he came to restore you unto the Father in himself. Hallelujah. We're just going to open up with prayer on this program today. Father, I thank you for those viewing today on this program. Father, I ask for the blessing of your Holy Spirit, upon this program, Lord, I thank you for stretching forth your hand to heal that many signs, wonders, and miracles are being done in your name, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the ministry of your word today, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So glad that you joined with me today in this program. The Lord inspired me in my heart to teach today on Acts chapter 3. And God is going to turn around things in your life that have been lame, things that have not moved for a long time. And there's people out there, you've been overwhelmed in the situation that you're in. You almost feel like you're a prison in your own body, a prison in your own uh, physical body because of an infirmity and an incurable condition. Well, Jesus came to heal those that were incurable. Jesus came to revive you and restore you and to make you whole. This is a ministry that brings restoration. It brings recovery. It brings revival. This is a ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we honor his ministry in our lives because he's the one that glorifies and magnifies Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were together up in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. When a person's in prayer, they're in communion with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Their fellowship is with the Heavenly Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. They have a love for the presence of God. They have a desire to be in His presence. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Out of that communion with the Holy Spirit in prayer, because Peter and John just got baptized in the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost. And they were speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. And when they were speaking in other tongues, there were other people there that day on the day of Pentecost. And they heard them speak in their own language of wonderful things of God, along with the 120 that were in the upper room. Because the wind of the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and it settled on them like cloven tongues of fire and they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them the utterance. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So it was the Spirit of God that gave them utterance. And that is a prayer language. You get re when you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and believe he died on the cross, that he shed his blood to remit sin, and God raised him from the dead to justify you freely unto God, declare you righteous in him. 
then when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's an empowerment from on high. Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You will be witness, witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all, all the other uttermost parts of the earth. And so the Holy Spirit gives witness of the death, burial, and resurrection. He gives witness that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is the Son of the Most High, and all power has been given unto him in heaven and earth and under the earth. And so you're empowered with his spirit, and that power is dunamis. By implication, a miracle itself, a mighty deed, a worker of a miracle. So they were clothed with the power from on high. And they were in communion and prayer, praying in the Holy Ghost. And the Word of God says, uh, pray always in the Spirit. Pray with that prayer language. Stir up the gift of God which is in you, which was given you by prophecy by the laying on of hands. And they were stirring up the gift of God. The Holy Spirit's called the gift of God. He's called the promise of the Father. And they begin to pray in the Spirit and worship God. And the mighty presence of the Holy Ghost came upon them. And they... They were at the gate beautiful. There was a certain man lame from his mother's womb and was carried there every day. He was at that gate, and it was called the gate beautiful, to receive alms. And Peter and John, they went into the temple, and he fastened his eyes Peter fastening his eyes upon this lame man, and John said, look on us. He was showing that lame man, we have something that we can give you. He said, look on us. Because they just received the empowerment from on high. And the lame man gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So there was expectation in the heart of that person that was lame that he was going to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand. Notice how he took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately his ankle bones, his ankle bones received strength. So the name of Jesus brought strength all the way into that, his bones. The name of Jesus means to make alive, to nourish, to recover, to restore, to repair. He made alive those ankle bones. He repaired those ankle bones. He nourished those ankle bones. When he said, in the name of Jesus, when that name means be made whole. So he was declaring the end from the beginning right there. He was declaring the outcome to that lame man. He said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He was giving him a command. He was giving him a command because they knew that they were empowered by the Holy Spirit to do the mighty works of God upon the earth. Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to my Father. And he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit manifesting a miracle, but they were in the communion with the Holy Spirit before they met this man at the gate beautiful. See, you receive answers to prayer when you're praying in the Spirit, that God, the prayer language that God gives you, the Holy Spirit. 
he gives you the prayer language and he begins, it's a, a prevailing prayer that avails much. Hallelujah. That prayer ahead of time availed much because the power of the Holy Spirit moved in on the scene and it was faith in the name of Jesus that brought strength all the way into the ankle bones of that lame man and he stood up and he began to walk. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 8, And he leaping up stood, and he walked. And he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, we, You men of Israel... Why marvel you at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life which God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I won't that through ignorance you did it, so did also your rulers, but those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out that times of the refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, of your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and to those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days, you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Jesus came to bless you. Jesus came to restore you. Jesus came to make, make you whole. Jesus came to uh, impart into you the life of himself. And when you receive him as Lord and Savior, the life of God comes into you. It's the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. Now this young man that just received a divine miracle, a transformation came into his life. He knew that he knew 
It was faith in the name of Jesus that made him whole. It wasn't faith in Peter. It wasn't faith in John. It wasn't faith in any other person but one person, and that person is Jesus Christ. When we go forth in the power of his name, his name demonstrates who he is. He's God Almighty. When we go forth in His name, His name means the salvation of God. That means recovery. That means safety. That means preservation. That means health. It means prosperity. Jesus Christ is going to heal your body today. There is a word of knowledge the Lord has given me today. You have been in a situation for a long time, years, with an infirmity in your body. God's going to deliver you from this infirmity. It's been along the back of your spine. And it affects the way that you walk. Jesus healed a woman that was bowed over by a spirit of infirmity. He said, whom Satan bound these 18 years be loosed on the Sabbath. You will be loosed today by the Lord Jesus Christ. When you put your faith in him today, not in a person, but in the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Just right there, wherever you're at, if you're in ho at home, a hotel room, a hospital, a nursing home, I want you to just lift up your hands and say, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior, and I receive you as my healer. I thank you for making me whole today, Jesus. I put my faith and trust in you. The power of God is going right through your spine right now. Just lift your hands a little higher. The power of God is going right through your spine and you're going to sense the power of God coming right through your physical body. And wherever you're at, just begin to move, do something that you couldn't do before and start worshiping God. Hallelujah. That lame man, he would start worshiping God. The worship of God was in his heart and in his mouth. Hallelujah. I'm also uh, hearing from the Holy Spirit that there is someone you've had difficulty in the moving of your wrist. The moving of your wrist. And it's affected your fingers. I'm not a medical doctor, but I, this is what the Lord has given to me. Just hold your hands before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing their wrist right now, Lord. I thank you for the power of God going through their wrist and, and through their fingers, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for bringing a healing a miracle into their, their wrist in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. There's someone out there, you've had an infection in your left ear, and it's caused a lot of pain and discomfort. Just lay your hand on your ear and call upon the name of Jesus. Jesus, I receive my healing from you today. I put my faith and trust in you for healing my ear today in the name of Jesus. There's another individual or individuals out there. You've had difficulty in your esophagus and you're swallowing. Just lay your hand upon your, your neck and just call upon the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus 
for healing the esophagus, Lord. I thank you for restoring them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the blessing of the Lord making rich upon their life, adding no sorrow to them. Hallelujah. There's people out there today that you've had a lot of sorrow in your heart, sorrow and grief in your heart. And that grief and sorrow has been in your life for a long period of time and has caused great depression upon you that you've had to uh, take medication for it. And the medication is not helping. Well, Jesus is going to deliver you from this sorrow today and from this grief today. And just put your hand on your heart and call upon his name. Jesus, I, I give you this burden today. I release it to you and I receive from you today a healing of my, my soul. I command the spirit of sorrow and the spirit of grief to lift off your life today in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for the oil of joy and gladness and the spirit of praise and thanksgiving to enter their heart by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Heavenly Father. There's someone you've had a condition in your organs, like by your spleen. Just lay your hands in that area. Just call upon the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for that spleen being healed right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Also, people that have had uh, uh, a difficult breathing, uh, that you've had a condition in your lungs for a long period of time, just lay your hands on your lungs. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing their lungs right now, Lord. I thank you for bringing restoration to their lungs in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for manifesting a miracle over their lungs. I thank you for total restoration over their lungs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Bless his name forevermore. Hallelujah. His name is to be praised in all the earth. All the earth shall praise the Lord. All the nations of the world will bow down before him and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is, he is so awesome. When you draw near to the Lord and just desire him, desire Jesus Christ, Desire to know your heavenly Father and to know Jesus. That alone is eternal life. Jesus' prayer to the Father was, Father, that they may know thee and the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. For this is eternal life. Eternal life is only in him. It's not in anyone else. It's not in anyone else. He is the mediator between God and man. There's no other person upon the earth or no other person in heaven, but the mediator is Jesus Christ. All the saints that are in heaven cannot answer you. It's Jesus Christ that will answer you. He's the mediator between God and man. He specifically said, you pray to the Father in Jesus' name. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that puts their trust in him, who delights greatly in his commandments. His seed, that means his offspring, shall be mighty upon the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when you desire the presence of God more than anything else in your life, transformation will come into your life. 
the Lord will begin to reveal himself to you more and more. The word of God will come alive to you. The word will begin to wash you. It will begin to clean you on the inside. See, we can only know the Lord by his word and opening up our heart and surrendering our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles lived a surrendered life. They lived a surrendered life to the Lord. And a true disciple of the Lord will live a surrendered life to the Lord. They will be filled with his truth and the truth will continually make them free. They're lovers of God and haters of iniquity. See, when you love righteousness and you hate iniquity, even your God shall anoint you with fresh oil. Jesus loved righteousness and he hated iniquity. And God anointed him with fresh oil above his fellows. See, Jesus will uphold all things by the word of his power. Your trust has to be in him and in him alone. His word, he said, Abide in me and my words abide in you. Ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. He's already given you an instruction. He said, abide in me. When you abide in him, you abide by the authority of his word. And his word abides in you. Then you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. He said, herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. That means they're a true follower. Your prayers begin to get answered. You're bearing fruit because you're abiding in the vine. You're abiding in the truth. You're abiding in the word. The Bible says, uh, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whatsoever is not of the word is sin. Whatsoever not of truth is sin. He says, thy word, my words are spirit and they're life. My words are truth. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Hallelujah. He's the one that imparts life. He's the one that imparts his life inside of you. He's the one that makes you completely whole. I'm so glad that you joined me today in the, on Times of Refreshing. And I'm looking forward for you joining me next week. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m., I'm looking forward to seeing you then. God bless you and have a great week. If you would like to support Times of Refreshing, please make donations to Victory Christian Church, care of Times of Refreshing at 112 Pine Street, West Union, Iowa, 52175. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.